is our annual reading of the Christmas Guest. We're going to see how Max does, because I don't have my Santa hat this year. I can't find it. And he doesn't really like baseball caps on. Look at me. Ready? Ready? It happened one day near December's end. Two neighbors called on an old friend. And they found his shop so meager and lean, made gay with a thousand bows of green. And Conrad was sitting with face a shine, when he suddenly stopped as he stitched a twine. And he said, Old friend, at dawn today, as the cock was crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me, and said, I'm coming your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stern, strewing my shop with branches of fern. The table was spread, the kettle was shined and over the rafters the holly is twined. Now I'll wait for the Lord to appear, and listen closely so I will hear his steps as he nears my humble place, and I'll open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone, for this was the happiest day he had known. For long since his family had passed away, and Conrad had spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew as the Lord as his Christmas guest, this Christmas would be the dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart, and with every sound he'd rise with a start, and look for the Lord to be at his door, like the vision he had a few hours before. So he ran to the window after hearing a sound, but all he could see on the snow-covered ground was a shabby beggar with whose shoes were worn, and all his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched, and he went to the door, and he said, you know your feet must be frozen and sore. I have some shoes in my shop for you, and a coat that will keep you warmer too. So with grateful heart the man went away, but Conrad noticed the time of day, and wondered what made the Lord so late, and how much longer he'd have to wait. When he heard a knock, he ran to the door, but it was only a stranger once more, a bent old lady with a shawl of black, with a bundle of kindling piled on her back. She asked for only a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's guest. But her voice seemed to plead, Don't send me away. Let me rest for a while on Christmas Day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at the table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay. For he saw that the hours were slipping away, and the Lord hadn't come as he said he would and Conrad felt sure he had misunderstood. When out of the stillness he heard a cry, Please help me and tell me where am I? So again he opened his friendly door and stood disappointed as twice before. It was only a child that had wandered away and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. Again Conrad's heart was heavy and sad, but he knew he should make the little girl glad. So he called her in and he wiped her tears and he quieted all her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more. But as he entered his own darkened door, Conrad knew the Lord was not coming today. For the hours of Christmas had passed away. So he went to his room and he knelt down to pray. And he said, Dear Lord, why did you delay? What kept you coming to call on me? I wanted so much your face to see. When soft in the silence, a voice he heard, Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor, And three times I came to your lonely door. I was the beggar with bruised cold feet, And I was the woman you gave something to eat. I was the child on the homeless street. Three times I knocked, and three times I came in, And each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best, and I was honored to be your Christmas guest. It's the end. You like that? Say Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope everybody is safe, happy, healthy, and able to spend some time with friends and family. And little boy birdies, and kitties, and puppies. Huh? Like that? Say, Merry Christmas!
Bye.